What up? Hey, dude. Potty break or what? Beer break. Let me grab a second beer. Still drinking Moon Man? No, I, I sucked down two of those and now I'm Coors Light. Coors Light. Cold as the Rockies. Mm, yeah. Is it I, really, you know, though? What's up? Is it really as cold as the Rockies? It's, it's, it's all right. I got, you know, I got my... I bring my little cooler out here. <laughs> hold, hold on. I got to turn off those lights. Yeah. Matt got a KX250. You guys didn't know about the last episode. Look at it in all of its glory. He's back. I turned on those lights so I can snap those pics for you, man. What do you got there? This is from Dogfish. Dogfish Head, I think is what it's called. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever heard of them? Yep. Cool. So this one's called Campfire. Campfire Amplifier. My wife bought it and was like, this is disgusting. We, so, we, need, we need a beer company to like sponsor and dude, send us How shit. cool would that be, man? You know? Just yeah. sending us some racks of beer. Just, just random stuff and we just talk about dude, it. Dude, if it's beer flavored, as you're well aware, if it tastes like garbage, I'll still drink it. That's what yeah. everyone else was arguing about. <laughs> Dude, that that one uh, episode you were drinking that stone something yeah. or others. <laughs> I got like, more comments about that. <laughs> but like, not only was it garbage, but it was high in alcohol, and you could tell you were just like getting more and more buzzed <laughs> as the episode was going on. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you drink stone IPAs, dude, uh, they know how to mix it. But Matt, the world wants to know. Do you and your wife enjoy any Netflix shows together? So, no. Uh, Really? Yeah, dude. With four kids, they like take (laughs) they they take over all the goddamn devices, (laughs) and we're slaving in the kitchen (laughs) making tacos. Oh man, I keep forgetting about the four kids. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it, without four kids, shit, man, I'd be on the couch, chilling a long time, dude. Just yeah, watching yeah, yeah. stuff, dude. That um, makes sense. That makes sense. But I, don't get me wrong, I love, I love shows. Um, yeah, I mean, a while back we were we watched like True Blood, Breaking yeah. Bad, yeah, um, Dexter, mm, yeah, uh, oh, Game of Thrones. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, does your wife like like the detective stuff, like like, like homicide, unsolved mystery? Well, she loves murder mysteries that yeah, are yeah. Th- th- like the real ones that are on like yeah, on Friday Saturday night. Mm-hmm. She loves that stuff, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, uh, Jackie is all about that murder mystery life, dude. Really, the unsolved mystery. I mean, she's got this podcast called Crime Junkie. She's all dude. It's twenty four seven. <laughs> but we don't have kids, so we yeah. can watch as much TV as possible, and we yeah. can fill in our brain. Um, it really just gets to a point of what time is it we should go to bed. Yeah. So lately, we're watching this show called Castle Rock. Okay. Pretty good. Um, very confusing, but pretty good. Kind of like a horror meets mystery um, type weird town thing. Um We've watched lots, lots of shows together, man. But I was just curious to see, you know, y'all's bonding techniques, what shows you're watching. Yeah, dude, honestly, like probably the past year, minimal TV. Yeah. Like, just so go to bed. you guys big on movies? <sighs> dude, movies are way too long. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> We, we we were watching Shameless for a while because they were like yeah. a, half an hour, uh-huh. 40, so it was nice and short. But mm-hmm. you got to watch that when the kids are sleeping. You can't yeah, watch that for sure. show. And <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, we're so tired at the end of the day. We go to it sleep makes early, sense, and, and, and we've been going to the gym together at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Okay, so we have to wake up bef- like 4.30. Yeah. You know, dude, you got to go to sleep at eight. You know, I mean, shit, that, that's our yeah. schedule, dude. It sucks. I mean, it's kind of. Well, you have four you kids. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, that's right, man. I mean, 
I feel like if I had four kids, I wouldn't be like, oh, this is what a Netflix show I'm watching now. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be all about them. So it makes yeah. a little sense. Yeah. You're lucky I'm here right now. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. So. Like, I'd rather forfeit my 11 o'clock so I can have you here, Matt. Oh, okay. Thanks, man. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you got a TV in your bedroom and everything or what? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. See, we don't even have a TV in our room. Okay. See, uh, but, some, but some people bark at that. Some people are like, mm, TV's not for the bedroom. Yeah. Where I'm like, bro, there's a bed in the bedroom and it's super comfy to watch yeah. TV on. Yeah. But usually when I'm in bed, dude, I'm out in a few minutes. Like, okay. I fall asleep so fast. Like, that's awesome. If I had the TV on, it would just wasted electricity, dude. You know? Yeah, so. for sure. For sure. Like, I also like, I'll play, I'm in, um, tearing into some uh call of duty yeah lately because there's a new one coming out and so we have a tv in the bedroom and i'll play in there so then she can watch murder mystery out in the living room and okay. i guess we can kind of like communicate with our eyes <laughs> into <different> yeah. <laughs> yeah cool man well let's jump into this uh do we haven't even run an intro yet so this is our yeah. problem matt this yeah. is our problem <laughs> yeah well <laughs> I'll write the time down real quick. All right, you want me to do this one? Uh, yeah, sure. What's going on, guys? It is Matt and Cody, and here we are with the Ask, well, no, the Broken Moto Show. Yeah. We answer your tech questions that you submit, and we just talk about solutions or potential solutions. So, Cody, what's that email that people send questions to? askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. That's the best way to get a hold of us to send your videos, pictures, information, uh, mileage, year, make, model, last thing you've done to it, uh, who owned it before you. Uh, I know. A bunch of information is the best. You guys have been doing awesome with it. We get lots of emails uh, um, with the questions, lots of thorough details. It's been really helpful. I don't think we've had like really like really bad one ever. So you guys are... At least illiterate. So that's good. Yeah. Um, so that's the best way to get a hold of us through email. Um, sorry that uh, your question may take two to three weeks for us to actually broadcast, but we uh, plow through at least four to five um, questions an episode and it's just, they're backlogged, you know? Yeah. So give us a break and we'll, yeah. we go through every single one. Are you referring to that one guy with the electrical problem? Possibly. <laughs> The guy who emailed us, but then didn't really email us, but then said that we deleted his email and that's just what we do. We delete emails because we didn't answer his question. That guy? I, I, I don't even know. Did we even answer his question? Was it the electrical oh, question? I'm not going to answer the, his question. Is, <laughs> oh, so you deleted his email? It's gone. Oh, okay. I was looking for it because I probably wanted to delete it myself, but it, hey, if you deleted it, that's fine. It's a long story, guys. All right. But well, I mean, hey. send your email to askbrokenmoto at gmail.com and it will get answered. Yeah. Scout's and honor. First come, first serve. We just yeah, start, it, start at the oldest date. Yeah. Right. Oldest date. And then work our. And hey, if you do four questions an episode per week, hey, we got a lot of questions. Right. And if you're a jerk about it, then you're not going to hear back from us. Yeah. For in that case, just go to the dealer. They charge. Yeah, a good rate of ninety dollars an hour. Just go there; it's it's fine. Oh man, this is good. This is a good little uh, release. Okay. <laughs> so, question number one. Okay, uh, you or me? Take it. All right. This is from Chris. Hey, gents. Similar to Dave's bike from episode six, my bike sputters at eighth throttle position so just eighth you know if this is three if this is zero full eighth position yeah usually when decelerating to coasting speed from not completely off throttle what's different the question already answered is if i lean the pilot jet i get deceleration pops in the exhaust which is a sign of lean condition okay so the bike is a 74 cb 550 stock intake four into one free flow exhaust 42 idle jets, 105 mains, needle in stock position, second notch from the bottom, 
freshly bike is freshly built new plugs new points condensers timing and valve clearances set to specs starting with stock 38 to 100 jets um i looked it up stock is 40 and 100 so 40 pilots 100 mates. Okay. so he's Thanks he's mentioning that. 38 on uh the bike was slow and had a lot of deceleration pop went up to 40 then 42 on the pilot jets and 105 mains bike rips, but the sputter while coasting is driving me nuts. Please help me if you can. Thanks, Chris. No, okay. Thank so, you, Chris. All right. So if you're sputtering at eighth throttle position and, and that's in that condition, you are flowing fuel 100% on the pilot jet. So it's just, too rich okay and if you're popping you're too lean okay but i, I want to clarify where he is popping or sputtering if he lets off and he starts to pop then your throttle's closed right um you probably should focus on the air screw adjustment yeah he's going to uh, backs it out like when he tries to lean that circuit out in D cell backfires. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, honestly with the stock intake, he should probably be at the stock pilot jet. And also I've worked on a couple of these that had pods and, uh, exhaust. And I actually had to drop the pilots to 38 and the air screw ended up three quarters out and it ran fine. Uh, done that to a number of them. Now, that, yeah. that's not to say that's going to help his problem, but in any case, what else can I add to this? Um, also, make sure your ignition time, I mean, he said his ignition timing is fine, but make sure it's not retarded because a lean mixture wants an advanced timing. Yeah. A lean mixture burns slower, so make sure you're not retarded by any means. Yeah, like uh, you can check the ignition timing in that position, you know, rev it up one fourth, get your uh, girlfriend, wife, dog to rev the throttle to one eighth and see what the points or what the timing's doing. That might be interesting to see. But it sounds like he's got exhaust on there, open flow. What he said, stock intake. So that means if he's honest. That means the air box is stock. That means there's no holes in it. That means all of the snorkels are in it. That means that the air filter is a stock filter and not like a K&N filter. But right at like cruising speed. <clears throat> I, did he say he synced it? Nope. Ooh. So that's, that's in the, the carb sync realm. Yeah, because the slides are down. Slides are down, throttles yep. one eighth, where we're, where we're in that that curve of carb sync being popular. Right. Um, I think he would honestly be fine with forty twos. From a, from you saying a stock forty, Matt. Um, yeah. Forty two. I mean, what? That's like, what? A hair. Yeah. So like, I think I read somewhere like a forty to four. You know, when you jump a number of two, that's like three percent. Yeah. A fuel change. So it's not a lot. It's not a lot. No. So, and he's saying that when he leans it out, it gets it almost like it starts backfiring because it's too lean. He could try a 45. Yeah. I mean, he could try it. Yeah. Well, and another thing is he uh, didn't mention the air screw setting and for any of these pilot jets because that's important that's too. True. So like, okay, when you're at a throttle, it's 100% on the pilot. The pilot's giving everything yeah. you can. When you're at idle, your air screw is a trim. It, it, it trims some of that out mm -hmm. for idle. So depending on the air screw setting at idle dictates where you should be with your pilot as well. So like this is an air screw. It meters air. If you're at... Uh, one and a half or more, then you should go down on your pilot. If you're at three quarters 
of a turnout or more. less, you need more pilot jet. Yeah, me down. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, that's why I had to think because yeah, I know it it's even like confuses me. From Rich. Yeah. So I mean, like, all right. So <clears throat> what what I would do is, you know, obviously make sure your carbs are synced. Sinking is going to be a huge thing. This is the this is the, the one of the difficult ones, Matt. You know. Yeah. It's got the crazy little like contraption yeah. arms that are like going back and forth. He, like he did not mention that, so it's almost like we should just stop now. Get yourself one of these tools. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, Motion Pro 08-0022. I got one. They're great. Yeah. Yeah. So with it running, do the do the air screw adjustment, and I just like to tune them to the highest peak RPM smoothest idle. I know you have a drop procedure that you do, right? It's the same thing that you're trying to achieve now. And okay. I mean, well, I, I just go for highest RPM and smoothest RPM. Yep. That's it. And right drop that procedure, down. Matt, just so you're clear, the drop procedure, all it is is you find that highest idle. Then you drop it half turn down, which would drop the idle. I don't yeah. drop. Okay. And you bring it right back up. Okay. That's so it's like, like, it's like a verification process. It's like a verification process. Okay. So I do that, but I didn't call it that. So I, yeah, yeah I, I go one way, I go the other way. Yep. And in the middle, you're going to find the highest peak RPM. And that's where, I, that's where you set it to, let's say, right. and you're going to want to write that down. Yeah. And then let us know. Yeah. And then the hardest part is me doing it on a 550, which is like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. trying to tune in these carbs one by one on an open four and a one exhaust be like i don't know if there's a difference yeah but there will be a difference just pay very close attention and if there's no difference turn that sucker all the way in until you hear a difference and then back it back out again <laughs> <laughs> so i mean yeah i mean i think it's gonna be carb sync i think he should get back to it after he sinks them get a nice set if you buy a 25 dollar carb sync set don't email us back get a nice set Borrow somebody's, whatever you can do, get a nice set because your carb sink is only as good as your carb sink tool. Yeah. Bottom line. Yeah. And those are fun to do. So have a lot yeah, of patience with are. them. I mean, uh, oh man. So I'm, I have a video on that. You might have a video on that too, Matt. Um, I do some techniques to use that, that might help you out. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm working on a, a, I'm calling it the carb sink off. Okay. So we got the D-Sync or the Digi-Sync or wherever those guys, PropTech. Yeah. PropTech. And I got a really cool company that I'm starting to favor called the Digi-Sync. Okay. They got like a cool little like octopus logo. All right. Because it has... It's got eight legs. Wow. Yeah. Well, six legs. Because the kit that I got allows me to do six carbs. Okay. It's cool. And then I have the Motion Pro. I'm doing a carb sync off video. I'm combining all three of them. And I'm giving you my idea of which one I think is cool and which one I think is, you know, good. They're all good. Honestly, nice. they're all good. Nice. So it's just, you know, it's whatever you want to do. Okay, let's move on because that was question one. Okay. Let's talk about this beer fund. Yeah. So, so first off, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we filmed two episodes in one night. We do. It just, it's just easier for us, so. Um, we're just gonna acknowledge the people that bought us beers last time. Yeah, Justo, Justo's returned giver, return giver. <laughs> Every episode, <laughs> don't beer money, dude. Out. My man, Justo. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, man. And then we have Matt. Matt, that's a great name. Yep. And then we got two. <laughs> then we got two Pauls, right? Yeah. P O V L. I yep. think we think it's Paul, and then uh, Paul. -A I've been calling him Paul and he hasn't barked at me too hard. So. Okay. Well, if it's something different, let us know because, yeah. you know. Thank you guys so much for the beer money. Um, we use it to fund our beers and we have a lot of beers now because yes. of yes. Uh, how generous you guys have been. We put a lot of work into this um, behind the scenes and we care about all your guys' questions and how much time we spend on them. So we thank you so much for you guys seeing the value in both me and Matt, um, even if our answers suck. Thank yep. you. 
Thanks so much. And as a result, our episodes get much longer. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> the more beer we drink, the longer the episode gets. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Question two. This is from Tyler, Matt, and Cody. I really like the show. Keep it going. Don't stop. I have a 76 CB750F and prefer a stock airbox. Good on you, Tyler. The problem is that they are so tight, it is almost impossible to install easily. I have switched to pods in the past, but had major issues with crankcase blow-by. How do I route the crankcase breather if I run pods without blowing oil everywhere? Any help would be appreciated. Take care. Sweet. This is an easy one. It is. The only way you can solve this, Tyler, is just to plop a, a filter on that thing. You can't solve it. If you're running pods, you got to run a filter on it and then, yep, let it dangle. Dongle the dangle. You can run it back over where the airbox was, point it towards the ground. Um, you can run it into an oil catch. There's a bunch of different ways you can skin that cat. But regardless, it's a messy process. There's going to be oil and then rock sediment all over the bike because that oil had dripped from yeah. the filter onto the engine. It's just the nature of the beast. You want to run pod filters, you're going to have a dirty bike. Yeah. And just check on it every once in a while because that sucker will drip oil and then you're running it over with your back tire. Right. Exactly. So not a good situation. Clean it out and get a Canon or, a, you know, a nice one that you can, I'm not, don't buy a Canon one. That's just be silly. But just clean it out. Contact cleaner, you know, Dawn dish soap, whatever it takes. Yeah. Um, but you're going to have to run it into a case. It's not, I mean, it, it's the price you pay when you screw up someone, when you screw up the airbox and no longer can run it into the airbox. Boom. Put the stock airbox back on. So you never run pods then, huh? I do. Okay. <laughs> You're, ba- you're bashing them, but you run them. Oh, I do. I bash them all day long, but yeah. I'm definitely running them on a 750. Dude, but I'm bashing them because that was a pain in the ass to run them on the bike that I have, which oh, is yeah. a, a newer 90, 96, 750 Nighthawk. Okay. Dude, it took me forever. It took me forever. It's like not fun. It's to, like to tune the carbs, you mean? Yeah. It, yeah. It's just not fun anymore. Like, okay. I finally got it. But it was just like, it took me like almost a year of just being like, I don't want to work on it. Okay, I'll work on it. I don't want to work on it. Okay, I'll work on it. Yeah. And to finally dial them in. And I was just like, the whole time, it's, I was just like, I'd rather just ride this thing, you know? Yeah. All right. Question number three. It's in, uh, let's see, what's this guy's name? Joshua. Hey, fellas, Ooh. enjoying the show. The issue is probably more designed than broken. Okay, he's got a 04 VFR 800. My bike, and based upon web discussion boards, pretty much all VFRs has a dead spot in the engine range from about four to 4,500 RPMs. And he's talking about uh, the flapper in the airbox, okay? I've been reading about guys disabling the airbox intake flapper, which restricts air intake until about 5,000 RPMs until it opens, then letting max air into the box. The claim is that it smooths out the dead spot in the RPM band. My question is, why would Honda put the intake flapper in to begin with? Is it to reduce intake noise or something to do with increasing air velocity coming into the cylinder at lower RPMs? Should I do this mod or should I just trust that the Honda engineers knew what they were doing? Joshua. All right. I'm going to try something real quick. If I hit this button, Matt. Okay, what are you looking at right now? I see the video. Hit play. Can you see me? Yep. And yeah. And the video? I see you and me up in the upper right, and I see the video like. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So I bumped them up. To Can you hear it? 31 yep. And 35, I believe. Okay, this guy bought a brand new VFR. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blur out this guy's stuff because I don't want to like people to know. Okay. The other thing I did too is I pumped up the tires. The back tire was at. 25 psi and the front was at 15. I think he just bought the VFR. 31 and 35. Mm, tire pressure. And I also removed those anti vibration pads, but I might put them back on so the vibrations are pretty bad. But today, what I'm Sweet. going to be doing is the pair valve mod. Um, pair, and I'm going to do the flapper mod, and I'm going to do the snorkel mod. So back in 2002, Honda wanted to meet the noise regulations and 
emissions regulations and all that other bullshit. <laughs> And they didn't really know what they were doing with this. I, I know. Well, some idiot 24 year olds have told the engineers they know what they're doing. Basically, when you're riding this bike, it has great power, especially in the top end. It pulls really hard. But one where one place it really These VFRs have VTEC in them. Like right Matt. Oh, really? The yeah. Begins. It's very choppy, the throttle. It just doesn't feel smooth. It's like on, off, on, off, on, off. And then at 5,000 RPMs, it's like a flat spot. And then it hits six, and then it's a little bit better, and then it hits VTEC, and then it pulls. And the reason why is you have the pair system, which is pumping air into the exhaust, and then the air is going through to the exhaust, going to the O2 sensor, and the O2 sensor is picking up that, oh, it's air, and it's making the bike put more fuel on it, making it richer. Now, when you're at the higher revs, it doesn't really matter. You don't notice it as much, but the lower revs, you notice it a lot. So the pair system really screws shit up. And then you got the flapper mod, which is restricting RPMs or airflow at the low RPMs, makes it quieter. That's why they did it. So it... Wait, what? I don't know how it would make it quieter. It's by noise regulations, but you're losing power, you're losing noise. And then, of course, finally, there's the snorkel, which is basically, people describe it as trying to breathe through a straw instead of just having your mouth open. It restricts air, and it makes you quieter. You're probably a lot quieter with the straw Again. versus when your mouth's open, but you're restricting air. So I just want to open all those up and see how she performs. Some people say it's a night and day difference. Others say it's no difference. I'm going to try it, though, and give you my opinions myself. This whole tank should just lift up. This is where it gets good. Uh, It's inside there. I can't really show you, but the flapper is inside here and it's actuated with a vacuum from here. Uh huh. So, in order to fix that, all you do is just pull it from right here. Oh, man. All right, so that's pulled. And I'm just going to. Tuck that over there. So yeah, tuck it right there. Um, He's not even going to cap it? Right here. That's a snorkel. So I'm just going to have to kind of pull that over there. And the pair system is one of these wires over here. I'm going to do all that. Just kind of work it so I get a finger in there. <laughs> Dude, check out that screwdriver. Come on. You got it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Holy shit. Look, look, look. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why it's running like shit, right? Oh, no shit. Oh. <laughs> oh man okay that's as far as we're gonna go <laughs> oh man i was so weak listening to that uh, <laughs> oh dude i couldn't uh it's got a whole I, tree in there man I, it's got an entire rat's nest dude entire rats which is common i mean depending yeah. on where you live or where you park the bike at it's so common oh. So, I have never heard of this flapper valve delete pair check. I think it's a stupid idea. Okay. Okay. You're hitting VTEC. I want to say it's, it's like at 7. I may not be 100% correct, but it's somewhere in the range that this guy, I think, is having a... It's not in the 5,000 mile. Mm, 5,000. RPM range or 5,000. I think it's a little bit higher than that. I may be wrong, but it, O2 sensors are not reading necessarily how much oxygen is in the mix, but necess- but it's more on the fuel side, how many unburnt hydrocarbons. I may be way wrong right now, okay? But it would make it richer. I would check your plugs out to see if that's what's actually happening, A, um, cause this guy sounds like he is experiencing the, this issue. As far as there being an mat, I don't have an answer for this guy, but I was, I was just ecstatic to show you that video because I thought it was hilarious because yeah. I've never heard of this 
And this guy <laughs> clearly explains exactly the right procedure or what to do. And then he finds a rat's nest in his air filter. And I'm very curious as to <laughs> if he even solved that he had a problem. If he even tested it without doing all the pair check stuff. You know, people have all different types of mods. Right. All different types of deletes. All, all, all these things. And it's just, excuse my language, but it's bullshit on half of the stuff that makes the bike perform better. Whether okay. Honda made a mistake with the pair check system or a flapper valve or a a tightened intake snorkel, you know, for EPA, very possible, very, very, very possible. Yeah. But I don't know. I think we're grasping at straws. Yeah. So, I mean, all right, I've never worked on this model. I don't know what to say. I've, I've Googled it and, and one guy said, all you do is pull off the hose, but it's a vacuum hose. So you're going to want to plug it. Right. Right. That guy just yanked it off and threw it. Yeah. He could have plugged it later. We don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you you got a nice vacuum leak. You're super lean. But anyway, um, but I want to make a comment comment on, should I trust that the Honda engineers knew what they were doing? And then why do they do it? Okay, so I'm an engineer. I see a lot of stuff, meaning like there are certain regulations that people or companies have to meet. Okay. Okay. And that dictates what your design or your final product is, whether it's good or bad or whatever. But sometimes engineers are forced to do things or companies are forced to do things like EPA or noise or whatever. Who knows? We'll we'll never know because they're not going to tell you this. Right. And these regulations, I I don't know how you find them, you know, other than you working for the company and knowing. Okay. Um, but I will tell you that they put stuff in there for a reason because if it's not needed, they won't put it in there because it's money. There are project people that's what, what's that doing there? That costs two cents. Get it out of there. Yeah. Or that the, the tooling or the, inje- you know, it's an injection molded flapper probably hey, right. that that's a $10,000 tool. Why, why do we need it? It's, it's, everything's there for a reason. Right. It may be there to pass something that you don't care about, but they have to care about. But if they can cut the cost, they will. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hell yeah. They're not going to put any money into it when they don't have to. (laughs) You guys heard it here first. This is Matt, professional engineer, giving you guys the details on some solid engineering information. Oh, dude. I'm, I'm working on a project right now and we have some new regulations that they want us to meet. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's a total redesign of what I'm working on. Yeah. Um, No, I mean, you really put that into perspective. I mean, it's, it's good, but you know what? I I read up on this mod and if he wants to try it, fine. I mean, you, 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 if you disconnect that hose and plug it, yeah, just try it. I mean, yeah, try it. I mean, no, it's, Let it's, us know. I, I would literally love to know if that makes a difference. It's it's one freaking hose, man. Yeah. You can put it on and off in a couple seconds. But unless this solves this guy's problem, then I wouldn't be happy to try this out. But I wonder, he might also have to have the flapper open constantly. Because if you have a vacuum port opening, you know, a vacuum diaphragm kind of probably rising, like one of those little turtle shell vacuums. Yeah rises opens the valve or close the valve or like this whatever however it's functioning he might you know i'll try leaving it open maybe like duct taping it to the uh air box or just leaving the flapper valve open um yeah do you know how this do you know how this thing works is it at zero vacuum it would be open i have no idea i mean because i just i i have no idea but i'm guesstimating here at higher rpms you're going to be at lower vacuum so therefore it's going to open right that would make sense to me to me they would need to open it up to add more air so that ignition timing can advance and then add more fuel to the everything so they're kind of doing everything all it because it's right before vtech you know so it's like either the system is setting itself up for vtech 
to hit because once you hit me, take yeah. it's my ah, and awesome it goes. Yeah. So you know the system is setting itself up for that, and there's like a little bit of a yeah. lag, or what? I don't know. I would just do one thing at a time. Try it. Try and try the flapper valve. Okay. Try and then if that, that that doesn't work. If you want to remove the pair system, do it, man. But I don't know what like how to help you from there because. It sounds like you need to buy a VFR 1100, which is a lot cooler bike, and it's a lot faster. So you can get those extra HPs by just buying a bigger bike. And then what I will say that the older VFRs, there were some solid issues there, Matt. Like their older VFRs, there there, there were some trouble, but they've been running that that VFR motor on the track because it's a powerful-ass motor. I mean, we're we're talking lots of low-end torque coming out of these motors um and they had head gasket issues and they had cam chain issues and they had a bunch of different weird issues the vfr has been around for a long time cool bikes but anyways the vfr that's that's as far as, as we should go and no offense to this guy who i will put your video up here i will you know cancel out who you are and whatever no offense to you whatsoever but the fact that you found a rat's nest near your box was just so funny I had to share it because I've seen it. I see it all. I see it all the time, but just the response of this guy. He, I mean, he edited that video, Matt. He edited it and he put it in, and he was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> it was just too good, man. Oh, I you had know, to share. How's that guy have all those subscribers, dude? We're doing something wrong. We need to put rat's nests in our airbox and all kinds of rat's stuff. Rat's nest, new flapper valve deletes. You know. Really much, it's it, it pretty much going against the grain. It's what we need to do. Matt. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because, uh, you, you know, when I was in Wisconsin a few weeks ago, I was fishing with my brother, and he has a little fishing boat, and he leaves it outside. Right, so we get in yeah. this thing, and we're getting the life jackets out and and whatnot. And there's a there's a mouse nest. He's like, God damn it! He was so <laughs> he was so pissed. Right. And uh, he's like, I, this, it's been only a couple of weeks. And so <laughs> we're, we launch it. We're in the middle of the river fishing. And all of a sudden, I'm, there's a mouse. That just, <laughs> it runs out, it <laughs> jumps, and swims all the way to shore. We're like, what? <laughs> We're watching this thing. I'm like, there's no way it's going to make it. it. It freaking made it. Probably 150 feet, this thing swam, right? And then, and then you know, we, we go back to shore, and we're just chilling, and then another mouse just jumps out. And my brother- Oh, my god! My brother grabs a shovel, and he's chasing it. It was like Tom, it was like Tom and Jerry, dude. It was hilarious. And, I didn't know mouses. I guess I didn't know that you can swim. I just couldn't imagine me like, we got to go. <laughs> All oh, in shore. Dude, speaking of, you know, you mentioned what YouTube channels you watch uh, mm-hmm. in a previous. Uh, dude, there's a guy that has a YouTube channel just on mousetraps. Uh, his name's like Sean Mousetraps or <laughs> M- Mousetrap Mondays or something. <laughs> All he does is test mousetraps dating back to like 200 years Holy ago cow. like he goes over different patents and he's like oh let's make this and he tries it and it's crazy this guy like has a night vision camera and he catches mice and he shows it he, he and yeah and shows it on on youtube of course you can't show anything graphic right um but the best one is a five gallon bucket with mm. the with the with the rod across with the some roller peanut, with the, some peanut butter in the middle, so you get a ramp. They come, whoop! They just fall, <laughs> they just fall in some water and, and uh, drown a miserable death. <laughs> for me, it, it's <laughs> look at where we are. <laughs> for for me, it's just like removing uh, pests. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Flapper uh, valves to pest control. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean. Dude, I had a skunk problem in my yard. Wow. A couple of years ago.
All right, question four, Gabriel, 1999 CB750. So this is exactly the same bike that I have. I actually had three of these at one point. Good bike. Um, greetings, fellas. I have a 1999 CB750 that is completely stock except for a K-N-N, K-N-N air filter in the stock air box. I live in Western New York where I try to ride as early and late in the season as I can. The bike runs good but not perfect due to the slight hesitation at zero to one fourth throttle opening. What jetting changes would you recommend for me? So um, I'm going to fire off with this one right away. Okay. I know, I know these bikes very well. Um, so you need to look and see on your mixture screws to make sure that they don't have that, that little like cast flag on them that keeps you from adjusting mixtures okay it's very popular it's to literally keep you from adjusting mixtures um and i have a full just to the t carb teardown video on this exact model that shows you how to remove those and you can um begin to remove the carbs and do a bunch of work but i would turn your mixture screws out those bikes run super lean Okay, you can tr you can try to turn your mixture screw out, maybe even a full half, like like a full turn out from where it is now. See if that 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 doesn't help. The Canon filter, I'm not too concerned because you're still running the, the stock air box. If there is an issue after you have attempted to adjust the mixture screws out, you can two options. One, put the stock filter back in because the Canon filter is really not doing too much for you. In fact, it's making your bike run worse. Okay, so that's what you need to realize. But Canon filters are cool. It's it's a high flow air filter, but it makes my bike run worse now. Okay, so you've added a modification that now allows you to not enjoy the bike as much. So you can either put the stock air filter back in there, but let's say you want to run run. Let's say you want to run a high flow filter in there. Pull the carbs out. Matt's done it before. I've done it before. Bump the idle jets up. A full, uh, a full setting is what I've learned is the correct terminology. I always thought a full, uh, like one step up, would be like one number, Matt. And as of recently, from you and other people I've known, one step up is actually like two point five. Correct. It depends how they number it. Certain carbs. Uh, let's say they'll go 30, 35, 40, but then there's some that go 30, 32.5. Yeah. I mean, whether they go halves or fives, two and a half okay. or five, I don't know. It all depends. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So if it's a uh, um, 38 idle, which I think it is, you can try going to 42. Okay. Or a 40. I don't think it's worth going in there for a 40. It's a lot of work to go in there for a 40. So I if looked you, it up. It said 35. Is that, tr is that stock? 35 no? idle? Yes. But, well, I looked that up in Partzilla, and I don't know if – that doesn't mean it's stock. It could be a recommended. And one other thing is – Keep an eye on your vacuum-operated petcock on that one. I have had one leak in two different ways, and it caused problems in both high RPM, low RPM. Just keep an eye on it. If you haven't freshened it up, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you have brown poop coming in from that, that petcock diaphragm, replace it, okay? Because it could be causing a bunch of different issues. It could be sucking fuel straight into cylinder number two. It could be leaning out the cylinder because the diaphragm's ripped. Or you never know. Keep an eye on that too. But either mix your screw out half to a full turn, bump the idle, or check the pilot screw. <clears throat> Sorry. That's all I got, man. Dude, nothing to add. You nailed it. Um, I just want to ask you, how do you remove those flags? I mean, I've, I've done it one so, way. I'm just wondering how you did it. I usually do it with the carbs out of the bike, drained of fuel. And you take a little bit of flame, some type of butane or torch or whatever. If you just heat it up real quick and grab it with a pair of needle nose pliers, 
So yank while it you're off, up, right? Just, just it, the glue will melt, and you can just pull it right off. And underneath there will be a nice little flat head screwdriver. Yep. Yeah. So what I've done is I thought it was part of the screw, so I hit it with a sand, a die grinder with a sander, uh-huh. which added heat, and then the thing just yanked off with. Yeah, you can with, use a soldering iron too. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that too. So it's um, and I've also grinded it down. A lot of work for nothing. Yeah. Um, and if you try to use a pair of dikes or angle snips, you will snap that head right off of that mixture screw, dude. I tried it like three or four different times, and every time I'm like, mm, pop, you know, snap the flag off, but all of a sudden the head will pop off of the mixture screw, and then you're done. Like you have to like uh, find yeah. a way to get it out. So heat is the best way. Soldering iron blow gun, whatever. Yeah, and remove, gun, right? removing the fuel is a good idea. Yes. <laughs> and at your own risk. Yeah. Fire extinguisher handy nearby. Just yeah, case. water, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. So that was one heck of an episode. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Um, uh, myself, Cody from Motorcycle MD, Matt from How to Motorcycle Repair. Matt, how do they get a hold of us? Uh, the email is askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. So submit your questions there. Year, make, and model, mileage, yeah. location, first name, videos and pics are a plus. Social security card and credit card number. And yeah. it will help us out so much. <laughs> so you guys can also check out the beer fund at the bottom. We'll put it in the link. Uh, any links that we talked about or helpful videos that we thought or whatever, We'll put them in the description underneath the question um, that was provided. Thank you guys so much for sending these questions. Without you guys, we would not have this fun time to drink beer and hang out and uh, share crazy stories. So until next time, Cody from Motorcycle MD, Matt from Hamilton Motorcycle Repair. See you guys right. next time. All right. See you. Thank you. Later. Four skunks would show up every night at dusk. They were just in my yard just <laughs> looking for grubs and stuff. And I'm just like, you couldn't go outside because they'd spray you. I couldn't let my yeah. dog out. They're yeah, just they're, they're, they're there for like an hour or two, just hanging out. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. Do we have time? Do we have time for stories? Because these are some good stories, man. I mean, I don't know. Dude, skunks why did you have what did you end up doing all right so i got my brother's pellet gun nice and at which which was it's really hard because at night you can't see what you're shooting right correct so i actually had to flip the lights on in this garage and the light went right out that window into the yard and i was okay. able it like beamed <laughs> a nice spot so like the kids were in bed and I remember going to the back door and like, <laughs> and I had, I had my scope and everything. And yeah, <laughs> what was crazy is I took four shots and I got three of them. That's pretty good. It, I couldn't believe it. Okay. <laughs> um, pretty good, two of them, <laughs> dropped right away one of them ran off uh -huh. and i didn't find it till a week <laughs> later i was mowing the lawn and i'm like oh what's that uh, smell, <laughs> and then I, I i had a rake and i moved it and all of a sudden maggots like Bleh! oh <laughs> dude it was disgusting <laughs> all right so those were three done the, yeah. the fourth one I was working on that one for weeks. I couldn't get them. <laughs> like, I just, like, I couldn't get them. I remember one night I came out here. <laughs> it was dark. I'm like, there he is. So I ran in the garage and I got the gun. Yeah. It was a pellet gun. And I, and I was shooting at it. And I'm like, I think I got it. <laughs> and I walk up to it. It was just a basketball, dude. <laughs> I'm I'm shooting the hell out of this basketball thinking it's a skunk dude. <laughs> <laughs>
And then oh, I had, dude, I almost lost the, I almost lost then, my shit. And then, <laughs> and then uh, I think like the year after, I had another skunk or something. Okay. And I decided to trap it in a metal trap, yep. right? The little like drop cage, like yep. like yeah, yeah. So that's a great idea until <laughs> you gotta pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea until you trap the skunk. And you're like, shit, now what do I do with it, right? Exactly. And then it was morning <laughs> time and my kids are up. So I'm not going to like kill this thing in front right, of me. Right, right, right. So like, I'm like, shit, what do I do? So I took a blanket. Yep. I walked up to it <laughs> and I just threw the blanket over, right? Yeah, that's the best way to do it. They, they, they can't lift their tail in there so they can't spray. So I, I picked this thing up. And I put it in my trunk. So I can, now I got a skunk in my car, right? So I, I drove. You got a skunk the, in the trunk. Yeah. Okay. Skunk in the trunk. <laughs> so I drove to the forest preserve with my kids and just let it go. Because, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, that, that, that was the right thing to do, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I read they can, like, travel back to their home miles. Really? Like, yeah, I don't know if he did. He never came back, but skunks. Um, there, was a, there was a pretty bad skunk problem around here. I mean, <laughs> one, one died under my neighbor's porch, and it just reeked forever, dude. Oh, that's brutal, man. That's so, brutal. Ah, uh, man, what are you going to do? Skunk problem. I've been skunk-free for years. so <laughs> That's good to know, man. you got a wicked shot of what it sounds like. Well, Basketballs no. don't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was crazy is those couple shots, and I got them all. I was like, "Whoa, that's that, really good!" Yeah, man. that that was like unheard of, right? Boom, I, I, headshot. I, Boom, headshot. <laughs> oh, and then with those two that I I or one or yeah, whatever that I got rid of. Um, you know, it, it was just garbage day, so I didn't want to put this thing in my garbage can because it would just think like a skunk. nasty right so yeah. I just, I was, it was like really early in the morning and i took a shovel and i just threw it in the street <laughs> <laughs> and uh I, I went to work i'm like i told my wife i'm like mal just call the city and say there's some roadkill right in front of our house <laughs> next thing you know there there there's a street sweeper coming <laughs> just sucks the thing right up and I, I don't know if it was their way of cleaning it or it was just street cleaning day. But in any case. <laughs> oh, Matt. That's too good, man. Yeah. Story time. <laughs> I could see out there just tossing this car in the street. Babe, get the city to do it. I don't want to do it. Just get the city to do it. <laughs> Oh, man, I've been crying for the past uh, 30 minutes, dude. Oh, man. I think we have another question, bro. Yeah, we do. We do. Sorry. Okay. 